Hi, and welcome back. This time we're gonna start working on those uh, those wheels. We're starting with the back one first. Just show you what I'm up against here. As I mentioned, this is the later type wheel with the rubber buffers. I'll be replacing those because they're about as hard as uh, as ligand and vitae in there right now. So I'll put some new ones in there when the time comes. But, uh, I just, uh, before I take the tire off of there, I've been ripping off these uh, these wheel weights that they've wrapped around there. There's no shortage of plumber solder apparently in this person's life. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff wrapped around those folks. So I'll get that off of there first. And, then I'll break the bead off the rim and uh, get that tire off and see what what the rim looks like underneath all that stuff. Okay, I got that back tire off and it's sitting right where it belongs, on top of the garbage can. Anyway, you can see that old white crusty stuff from the aluminum rim that's all over there. Of course, that's that's aluminum oxide. It's, it's almost a shame because that, uh, that tire had a lot of print left on it, but I mean, I'm sure that hasn't seen the road in 30 years. And even though I, I don't ride like a maniac, but I don't really relish the thoughts of uh, driving that bike with that tire on. So uh, anyway, let's do a little kind of before and after video here of this back rim. Let's see, it's pretty, pretty dirty looking. And you'll notice I got a little dent here in this uh, in this hub plate, so that'll have to come off of there. There was actually a rubber rim tape on here that was in place and doing its job. And again, you can see all this this old white corrosion from the aluminum that'll have to get off of there. And there's you know a bunch of crud and dirt in there around the uh, the cooler fins. Not that you do much on this thing, but. <laughs> Anyway, uh, there you go, poor Annie, made in Italy, so uh, yeah, let me get that cleaned up. Oh, I might as well show you the back brake too while I'm at it. This back brake, I was surprised when I got it out of there because it's, uh, it's really not in bad shape at all. Come on, baby, off of there. There's the old riveted on type brake, they're dry, you know, so a little bit of, uh, a little bit of upwind dusting with some sandpaper on that, and, uh, those are good to go, there's not really any need of replacing those brakes, and even the hub isn't, uh, isn't all rusty inside, so that's a good sign. Anyway, let me get this back on there. Washer and the nut back in place to hold it all together. There's all that, uh, all those pieces of, uh, of solder that I took off of there that they had on there for weights. I don't really know why they thought they had to do that. Like, uh, I never balance back wheels and I never have a problem with it. And I've done, God, I must have done a hundred wheels, never had an issue. Front wheels, yes, sometimes you need to balance them, but if you if you install the tire right, it's not usually a problem. But anyway, I'll do it my way when I put this thing together. Meanwhile, I gotta get this rim cleaned up. Well, back wheel pretty much looked after. Now it's time to start doing a front wheel. Front wheel isn't as cruddy looking as the back wheel was, but it's got six or eight ounces of lid all over that too so i got to take all these little pieces of plumber solder off of there to start with and then i'll get the tire off and i'm pretty sure that's probably all full of that white crusty stuff and this tire here it's got some some cracking in the sidewalls here and there on it so i won't be using that again of course either and who wants to use a 30 year old tire so yeah, but like I say, it's kind of too bad that, that that never saw enough road use to to wear the print off it. Anyway, I'll get on with that and let you know what I find. Right. Now before I get started with ripping that tire off the rim, I want to show you what came in the mail today. Yahoo! 
I got the whole isoelastic kit for the earlier type commando. This is the uh, the isoelastics for the back part of the engine. Um, this uh, is the same apparently on all commandos, but they are making uh, the kits a little different now for the front. Uh, you don't have to do any machining on that. Where is it? <laughs> I lost it. On that block right there for the front now. Uh, to fasten the older one, the Mark III ones into the older ones, you had to machine about a quarter inch off of this side right here. As you can see, one side sticks out a little further than the others on the older type. Anyway, on the new kits that they have, you don't have to do any machining. You can just mount the, uh, the new white elastics right in there. So that's all ready to go. But the only thing that boils my bacon about this is that little piece of paper stuck right to the outside of it. That's taxes that I had to pay in order to get that from the mailman. <laughs> It really gets my goat because uh, here in Canada, we have to pay a thing called GST, which stands for Goods and Services Tax, and it's really annoying. Like, I bought this kit from Andover Norton in England with British pounds, and the Royal, Royal Mail was hired to deliver it to me. And somehow or other, sometimes when this stuff goes through customs, especially if it's a little bit more expensive, they tend to look at it and say, oh, we can tax this guy for this. So anyway, I got taxed on 200 and, what was it, 200 some odd bucks. Anyways, I had to pay $21 in taxes on this, which isn't a whole lot of money, but it still gets my goat. But uh, like I say, this, these are goods and services that I purchased from another country but I had to pay Canadian taxes on it. I mean, it's like Vinnie Carmine coming to you and saying, hey, we got a parcel for you, buddy, and we'll give it to you if you give us some money. You know, it's extortion. It's just out and out extortion. That's what it is. But anyway, that's enough complaining about it, I guess. I got it. It only took about six days, maybe seven to get here. So that's quite, quite fast shipping coming from England. It's actually faster than if I had ordered it from, let's say, British Cycle Supply, just the other side of the Canadian border in Loring. So anyway, I'm happy. I've got it. Let's get on with that front wheel. Get that cleaned up. like that. Just takes a little more. Well, maybe a little more. Okay. That's pretty good compared to what it was, I think. Uh, I don't know if my face is going to breathe a little bit. It's kind of good to wear something over your face when you're doing this stuff. There's all kinds of dirt and dust coming off of there. You don't know what's in it. It's as sort of nasty stuff. It's not good for you. I wish somebody would have told that to a younger Bruce years ago or a Bruce who would have listened. But, uh, anyway, that came out pretty good. I'm happy with that. Over here. I still need to clean up that uh, brake drum. Same with the back brake drum as well. But, uh, anyway, like I say, I'm happy with that. 
spokes all look good on it. None of them are broke on the front wheel. I got all that, that white crusty stuff out of there that was causing problems. I'm going to squirt a little bit of penetrating oil on them spoke heads just in case I have to uh, adjust, <coughs> excuse me, adjust any of them. But uh, anyway, yeah. I'm content with that. Might as well show you what I've been using for for tools here. Let me just get this wheel out of the way. Set that down there on the floor. And you stay there, okay? All right, yeah. That's an old uh, buffing head that came from a bunch of stuff my uncle had years and years ago. You used to be able to buy these in the local hardware stores. That's this piece here. The, uh, the rods running through them. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you just. Everybody used to just hook them up to an old washing machine motor, so I had space above the bench here, and I said, well, hey, now, why don't I mount that on there? So I've been using that for years. This little polishing wheel is worn out. I have to replace it. It's down to about five inches in diameter, so it definitely needs to be renewed. It should be about the size of this wire brush wheel here. That's a really fine wire wheel that came from Lee Valley, actually. I haven't been able to get them that fine anywhere else, but they don't mark aluminum. They just clean it up, so it's really good as far as that goes. Like sometimes some of those wire wheels, even the fine ones, they're quite a bit coarser than that, and they'll actually tear into the aluminum where this one doesn't. It, it just does a really nice job. They're a little expensive compared to the other ones, but uh, they're really good. And what else? Uh, for tight spots, I use these little cheap little wire brushes. If they break or they get worn out, it's not a big deal. You just throw them away and use new ones. That's a brass one. I like the brass ones when I'm working with aluminum because, uh, again, it doesn't scratch as badly as stainless steel will. But if I'm working on steel, like around spoke heads and that sort of thing, and little stubborn spots I'll use the stainless steel brush like that and like I say this particular ones are something you would find at the dollar store they're cheap as hell when they break you don't worry about it you throw them away um what else every once in a while I'll get into a tight corner where I have to use the auto saw I find it after auto saw something like mother's to to get that final polish really seems to work well uh, for the wheel, of course, I'm using Rouge and Triple E, and sometimes I got a big block of emery if I really want to move stuff fast. But uh, anyway, there's a lot of, even if you're using the buffer, there's still a lot of uh, elbow grease involved. You know, you have to pick it up and hold it. It doesn't hold itself, you know. Anyway. That's it for this one. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, please like and share, and you can subscribe as well. That way, you know when the next video is coming up. So, thanks for watching. Bye bye. All right, let's just call this quick epilogue to that uh, that last little video I done on cleaning up these wheels. Uh, if you've been watching any of these videos, you'd hear me mention about uh, bringing a Royal Enfield home to work on. And uh, I just got it home here this morning. This is January the 14th in 2024. So, uh, anyway, the object of this is to get a, a mechanically sound machine. Apparently, the bike has got something like about 12,000 miles on it since the engine was rebuilt. So the owner's hoping that it doesn't need too much in the way of serious work to, to make it mechanically sound. Anyway, we'll find out about that when we get into it. And uh, Let me see. It's a 69 750 Interceptor. As you can see, it's certainly not original. It's been... It's been well loved and customized by the owner. He's a good friend of mine that I've known for quite a few years in uh, Atlantic Vintage Motorcycle Society. So uh, anyway, this will be my little filler inner project for, you know, while I'm waiting for parts on the commando project. And uh, meanwhile, like I say, I will start a separate series of videos on this Royal Enfield. So if you 
if you want to subscribe you can you can get notices on when that so that sort of thing comes up and of course i'll be continuing with the with the commando project and uh anyway thanks for watching i'll keep you posted bye bye